on the left of two. Two. Careful. Limit from the left of two. Three. Yes. Three. Right here. Good. Uh, the limit from the right of two. The limit from the right of two. Is that infinity? The limit from the right of two. Two is right here. Okay, three. That's from the left. Is it on not defined? The limit from the right of two. As x approaches two from the right. Function one. values get closer and closer, closer and closer to 1. We're not asked about f of 2. Do not confuse the operator called evaluate with the operator called limit. So let me know if everyone sees this. The limit from the left is 3. The limit from the right is 1. Do we all agree with that? Yeah. Yes? What about the limit from either side? It doesn't exist. It does not yeah. exist, of course. What about f of 2? Three. Yes, the function value is 3, where the full point is. Now they're asking us to find the limit of f of x from either side of 4. As x approaches 4 from the left and simultaneously 4 from the right, the limit is? Anyone, please? You are muted. Four? Absolutely. We know that the function doesn't have to be defined there. The limit from the left is 4. The limit from the right is 4. Now, what is f of 4? Which has nothing to do with the limit. There are two different operators. This is the operator called evaluate. This is the operator called tendency, trend. How much is f? Is f of 4, how much? Yeah. It's an open point. Undefined. Undefined. Mm -hmm. Because it's an open point. Do we all agree with this? Are we okay so far? Anyone, any questions? Anyone, any questions? Okay, so let's look at something like this. So for the function whose graph is shown, or here, or here, doesn't matter, um, let's say the limit from the left of negative 7 the limit of the from the left of negative 7 limit from the left of negative 7 can anyone tell us does that graph stop at whatever that would be negative 4 or is it implying it's hard for me to see that it's going down towards negative infinity forever it goes forever yes yes Yes. So it's negative infinity. What about the right from the right of negative seven? Can anyone tell us the limit from the right of negative seven? So I'm assuming that it's not clear, so you're not sure about this, or you're just shy to answer, or? I'm not sure about this one. 
As x approaches negative 7 from the left, the function goes this way. Goes this way. What is the limit if it goes this way? <laughs> Perfect. As x approaches negative 7 from the right, the function goes this way. What does that mean? Negative infinity. Good. The limit from, the, from either side of negative 7 is also... Negative infinity. Good. So then x equals negative 7 is a vertical asymptote. That's the reason why it's a vertical asymptote. What about the left of negative 3? What is the limit from the left of negative 3? Yeah, positive Excellent. The limit from the right of negative 3. Infinity. Good. So both sides positive infinity. The limit from either side is also infinity. And x equals negative 3 is a vertical asymptote. The same thing for 0, right? x equals 0 is a vertical asymptote because from the left it goes to infinity and from the right goes to infinity. What will you say about 6? Yes, x equals 6 is also a vertical asymptote. But what is the limit from the left of 6 in this case? Negative infinity. Perfect. The limit from the right of 6 in this case. Negative infinity. Excellent. And now the limit from either side of 6. The numbers are different, so it will be undefined. We call it DNE. We say that the function is undefined when the value doesn't exist, but when the limits are different, we'll say that um, the function does not have a, yes, the limit does not exist there. Awesome. Very good. So um, I would like us now to look at an example of 15, 16, 17, 18 any example from here. Sketch the graph of an example of a function f that satisfies all of the given conditions. Okay? So, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's choose one. Any preference? Okay, I'll choose 17 then. Limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1 from the left is 0. Limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right of f of x is 1. Limit as x approaches 2 from either side of f of x is 3. f of negative 1 is 2. And f of 2 is 1. Okay. So I copied these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 conditions. I call these type of problems gibberish. It, this is gibberish to me. I have no idea what this means. I can't even look at it. So I will have to organize the information in a table so I can make sense of it. Because right now it's gibberish to me. And of course it's the same table that we are being, we're going to use forever. In which one by one I put the, the given information. And then I will figure out what I need to do. So for now I'm going to write negative infinity to infinity. And I have f of negative 1 is 2. 0 has to be in the table. I may use it or not, but I know where it is. It's in the middle of the table. f of negative 1 is 2. So I'm done with this. f of 2 is 1. So I'm done with this. Then it says the limit of f of x from the left of 2 and from the right of 2 is 3. Remember those parentheses that we talked about. So I have 3 in here. 
So now this is done. Because I know what it means. What it means. The limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from either side is 3. The limit as f of x uh, as x approaches 2 from either side is 3. That's for the function. Now, the limit from the left of negative 1 is 0. Done with this. And the limit from negative 1, uh, from f of x as x approaches negative 1 from the right is 1. I'm done with this too. Now this is no longer gibberish. Now it's extremely clear what I have to graph. And here's what I'm going to graph. The point negative 1, 2. The point 2, 1. Negative 1 to 0. Negative 1 with 1. 2 with 3. That's my graph. Let's see if it fulfills all the given conditions. Of course it does. Negative 1, 2. 2, comma 1. The limit from the left is 0. The limit from the right is 1. The limit from the left is 3. The limit from the right is 3. Here's my graph. Infinitely many an correct answers. You can do this, you can do this, you can put a vertical asymptote here if that's what you want. You can do whatever else you want. But this was the simplest idea that I could come up with based on what I was given. Please do not attempt to put these things somehow in a graph without analyzing and thinking about the table. You're going to have difficulties later. We're going to use this table over and over. So when you say that there's infinitely many possibilities, yeah, is that yeah, just meaning yeah, how you can, you're connecting those yes, points? But yes, the points you, can, you, can put, you can put you can put a vertical asymptote in here if that's what you want. You can uh, but go the to points that you have on there. These have there. these are but carved. The ways in which you these them can be these are carved in stone. But the rest, it's up to you. You can go this way. You can put another vertical asymptote here. You can put a horizontal asymptote. You can do whatever you want. But these points are carved in stone. Infinitely many different functions we can come up with. Any questions on this problem, please? Any questions? Because I don't want to confuse you. I'm going to erase the extras. Because that's uh, what I have here is not a function anymore because I put different, different things in there. And that is confusing. But it was a very good question. Thank you. So I'm back to the original function. Notice that it's a function because right here for this vertical line there is only one point. For this vertical line there is only one point. Careful, do not put these full points. That will be a, a, a big mistake. Any questions on this problem? Okay, moving on. I'm on page 7. Okay. So, when I determine the limit as x approaches 5, give me a polynomial function. Any polynomial that you want. Any polynomial you can think of.
Anyone would like to give me a polynomial? Anyone? No one wants to give me a polynomial. Any polynomial, please. Any degree. 2x plus 5. Perfect. The linear polynomial, 2x plus 5. The simplest thing to do is, in order to determine the limit for a from a polynomial, simply plug it in. Notice that I always say x approaches 5. x does not equal 5. But isn't that a contradiction when I tell you plug it in? So 5 times 2 is 10, 10 plus 5 is 15. Well, it's not a contradiction because this is a polynomial function and the limit will be, it's a continuous function, there is no problem, so that's why the limit will be 15. So we are allowed to plug it in, although x does not equal 5. But for polynomials, it works. Also, let's say, for a rational function, this is a rational function. Is 5 in the domain of this function? Or I should say, what is not in the domain of this function? Maybe that's easier. What is not? Yes, awesome. So 5 is in the domain. We are using the same rule. Plug it in. What is the limit then? All my numbers except 83. That's a domain, but we want the limit. One eighth. But it's, I have x plus 3, and x is 5. So if you plug it in, wouldn't that be what he said as 1 eighth? Perfect. I thought he said 5. That's why, I'm sorry. I, 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 my, my apologies. That's what I heard. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So when we calculate limits, if we calculate limits from polynomials, very simple, plug it in. When we calculate limits from rational functions and 5 is in the domain, again, plug it in. Well, we do have situations when a limit as x approaches a from f of x is not a number but two specific, very different situations. A number not zero over zero, and the other special case is zero over zero. So see, in this case, we had the rational function. Five was in the domain, and you said very easily, five plus three is eight, so it's one over eight. Done. But there are two very important cases. One case is when we plug in this number and we get a number over zero, but not zero. The numerator is not zero. Or we get zero over zero. These are very different situations. This one has no hope to exist. No hope. This one has hope. Meaning, I don't guarantee that this will be a number and the limit will exist. But it has hope. No guarantee, but hope. But this one has absolutely no hope. We're not going to talk about this one at this moment. We're going to talk about this. But please understand, when the numerator is a number, not zero, and the denominator is zero, the limit will never exist. What are the options here? The options in this case are 
positive infinity, negative infinity, or D and E. Here, the sky is the limit. No idea. Anything can happen. Anything can happen. The limit may exist, or it may be this, or this, or this. I don't know. have no clue. This is called indeterminate. Case. There are seven such cases. We're going to go through all of them. Okay, so we don't talk about this right this moment. We don't talk about the indeterminate cases at this moment, all those seven. We are talking about this. Okay. And now I would like us to uh, take some examples.